Hi everyone, it's Cheryl. Um, just a quick update on what I've been doing and what's coming up on my channel. I have been trying to de-stash and it's not going really good. Um, had a lot of crap at work. Our house that I work at, they discovered mold, so we got moved back to the house I used to work at. So we got 12 people in one house and oh my god, it's just... Some days it's unreal. Um, but what I've been doing is I bought a laminator and I've been playing with that a lot. And some of the things I've, I've been just experimenting like with papers and, and some fabric. And I had an idea for some really cute little uh, magnets, or not magnets, um, you could do magnets. Um, some really cute little paper clips. And so I was just going to share one of those with you. This is the little cat. He's fabric. I realize there's a glare from the laminate. I'm sorry about that. He's fabric. And like I said, I've been experimenting and playing because I haven't had a lot of, you know, I've never used a laminator much. So you see where he's cloudy? Uh, I realized that I was cutting out with scissors and every time you bend the laminate, it pulls away from your original thing. So it gets cloudy. So... Definitely cut with a craft knife. I found that out. Uh, so I did him. And I've got a cute little pumpkin, but I can't find him. I did honestly clean off my craft table. Not that you can tell. Uh, not at this moment because I've been doing other things. But then I have some more fabric. I have these cute little owls. And there's like six different owls. And they are so, so goofy. I want to get one of those heat tools that you can go around like plastic and stuff with. And see if I can fix the ones that are, because this Scotty dog is adorable, but as again, you can see, I cut him out with scissors and saw the laminates pulled away from the, from the cloth. Anyway, I've been doing that. And then I was watching a video by I Am Mama 24 She's awesome. I've been subscribed to her channel for a long time, but it was like right before I left YouTube for a while. And I was going through the things looking for stuff to watch, which I've got plenty. And she just happened to be doing something with a laminator, which is why I bought it. And she was making, um, oh my gosh, I can't even think today. Yesterday was just a crazy day and it's still on my mind because I kind of turned a coworker in who happens to be a supervisor. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to go well today. Um, but it was, it was something I felt the need to do and because of reasons that I cannot disclose. So I did, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to go well today, but we'll see what happens. We kind of have a love-hate relationship anyway. Um, so she was making uh, traveler's notebooks, and so I made one for myself just to experiment. And I've been watching Lolly Palooza. If you haven't watched her channel, she's awesome. I will try to link the two channels below. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt it. I usually have bad luck with that, but I'm going to try and she was laminating napkins, so I was trying some of that. Like I said, this is just a big experimental thing with me right now. But I did make this traveler's notebook. I know they're not the big deal right now, but I wanted one. And then I've been watching Lisi46, who is also really, really awesome. And I love what she does with her travels, traveler's notebook. She makes them like junk journals. So this one is with the laminate on it. It is eight and three quarters by five and a quarter and I might next time want to make it you know like go like eight and then, you know just just size it down just a little bit but I really like this size and and for what I want to use it for I'm really liking it so I've been experimenting with cutting pockets whoops cutting pockets after you laminate and I haven't got that down really good yet I can see where I kind of sliced not I didn't slice all the way through the paper but you can see where I had the knife so I've got to get a better with that um, so I made this pocket in here to hold things that I want to put in here. And I decided I'm going to do these as a monthly. Lisi does this and it's really cool. And I really like the idea. I'm going to do it as kind of like a monthly junk journal. So I just cut this out of Ideals Magazines and put the word October on there. So that's my October page or cover. And then I just used old papers like graph paper and um, old ledger paper. And that's an envelope and just plain white copy paper and like this this will this will be my halloween pages i'm sure um, i laminated that one i did not laminate november because i have i did a little small collage on here and i didn't know how it would go over this stuff so well i'm sure it would have
but I didn't do it, so this is November. And I used some Graphic 45 on there that I had left over. I believe it's, I think it's a place in time. And then again, and this is just, these are just envelopes of stuff I want to put in here. And so pages out of, you know, like pages out of Ideal Magazine, this kind of stuff, you know, so. And then this is going to be my Christmas one, but it's probably going to get huge. And I just use planner pages and, you know, some notebook, notebook paper, whatever I had in that one. So it's going to be fun to do this. I'm really looking forward to it. Not looking forward to the weather we'll be getting in October, but I'm looking forward to starting on this. And I'm going to try to do it every day. I've got enough pages in there I can do at least one to two pages a day. So, so I will be sharing that as I go. And then today I have, well, I started last night because I was, or yesterday, I was just so frustrated. Came in here and I thought, you know, I've got so much paper and I've got so many papers I've cut pieces of and stuff like that. So I started taking and just making little pieces of ephemera from the papers I had cut and like some, you know, this, this one just had all kinds of Halloween words on it. That'll come in useful. I love this paper. It was individual sheets I bought, I think, at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. Anyway, it's really cool. And then I had this um, paper stack, and I had these little round things. So I just took my punch and punched out little round things to go with that. Um, I had another piece that had little postal cancellations on it, so I used some of those. They're going to be fun to work with. I've got all kinds of junk all over. I've been cutting out Christmas cards. I bought a bag of cards at a thrift store one day, and usually when they do that, they put in together all kinds of cards, and they had Christmas ones on top. I'm like, oh, okay, but it was in a bag, and it was sealed, so I couldn't really look. Well, the whole thing was Christmas cards, so I've been cutting out to use, like, for pockets and journaling cards, and I saved some of the red stripes up there because those will make cute little journaling spots. I've taken other cards and used my punches and just punched out neat little... Oops. Need a little Christmas stuff out of them. Um, some of them I'm using the whole front of the card. This one I just cut around the flowers. You know, and these are, these are going to be great in journals. And it's also, I mean, you got a stack of cards. They're high and huge, and they take up a lot of space. This, these will take up space, but hopefully not near as much. And then I'm saving the backs of the cards because, hey, they make tags. They make journaling spots. You know, you can collage on them and make your own postcards or note cards or whatever. So I'm saving the backs. But it's a heck of a lot smaller of a stack when all you have is one side of a card. Uh, and I was just going through some other papers like the Graphic 45 that I've got that I've cut some pieces out of. And yeah, so that's what I've been doing. And I'm going to continue to do that because part of de-stashing is just reorganizing too. And, or, you know, part of cleaning and getting my craft room like I want is going to be reorganizing. So I'm just going to be keep, keep doing that as I find papers that... I can use and cards and stuff and I have a bunch of cards I have just listed in my Etsy again and I wasn't happy with the video so I didn't I did not use it but I have listed some more playing cards some of which are these Rudolph cards and they are shaped aren't those cute so I have those listed in the shop right now and I have I've listed some of these these are from 1921. They are cards that teach kids um, basically phonics and how to spell and use words and sentences right. And these are from 1921. And these, this one, a particular one, is studies and synonyms. Isn't that cool? And then I've got some of those in my shop. But they're limited, so when they're gone, they're gone. Um, and what I want to be doing next is I want to be listing some of those Christmas cards that I got. Now, there's quite a few that are religious. Um, what it was was these people must have kept their Christmas cards forever because they were all basically to one couple or one person. And he must have been a car dealer somewhere in one of the towns south of here. And he must have been a very popular man because I had stacks of Christmas cards. So I'm going to be listing some of those. And some of them I went ahead and cut the backs off of. Uh, with, and some I have not. But they will be listed, and there are a lot of religious ones, beautiful ones, some that are older. I don't know if they're really vintage -y vintage, but they're older and probably, I would say, 80s, maybe 70s, maybe 60s, judging by the cards, but I don't know. 
but some of them are older and I'm going to be listing them and in with those will be some like birthday cards and stuff. So I'm hoping to get a video up on that soon. I gotta take pictures of them and that's, yeah. I could offer them as grab bags, but I don't know how that would go over. But yeah, I want to get those listed on my Etsy. And then I've got some special projects coming up that I want to do. I'm working on a, a kid's Halloween smash book. And that's in progress. And then I'm probably going to invite you along because I'm going to be starting on some very special journals soon. Uh, the, the people, the ladies I work with are... I work with the developmentally disabled, for anyone who doesn't know yet. And they are very special to me and I want to give them a gift this Christmas and I want it to be a homemade gift because they seem to really appreciate that. Now three of them write journal and that kind of stuff so that's going to be easy there's going to be journals for them and I have one she'll write her name and stuff like or four of them are capable of writing and journaling and that I have one she could, she'll write her name but she doesn't really care about writing but she does love Mickey Mouse so I'm thinking if I could just put her together a journal with Mickey Mouse you know that would that would probably be fine for her. Then I have one that is basically 99%, 98% nonverbal. Um, but she does like to look at pictures in books. So I was thinking if I could do her a picture journal, that would be really cool and just put in things that I know she likes. And then the last lady is blind. And I was racking my brain going, I want to give her something I made too. And I happen to remember I have embossing folders. So even though she's blind, I'm going to be using those and it's going to be kind of a special journal because it's going to have stuff in it that I wouldn't normally put in a journal. But I'm going to make it all about sensory and touch and feeling and textures for her. And I think she might really enjoy that because maybe she can't see it, but she can feel it. So I will probably bring you along on that adventure when I do that journal. And maybe one of the others, but I'm not going to do them all because there's seven journals. I will show them to you when I'm done. But I probably will only like do just one regular type journal and then I want to do the sensory journal with you too because just because a person can't see doesn't mean they can't feel and touch and, you know, and that kind of stuff. And I mean, sensory is good for all types of people with developmental disabilities. So I am really looking forward to this. It's a project. It's going to be a labor of love and I can't wait to get started on that. So that's going to happen soon. I have this weekend off. I've got to run and get stuff because I've been neglecting doing that. And the cupboard's getting bare. And <laughs> But I'll have Sunday. I'll have all day Sunday to do stuff here in my house and hopefully to sit down with you and do some crafting. So if you haven't checked out my Etsy store, um, I will link that below. And I don't have a lot in there right now, but I have a few things. And if you like what you see here... Oh, before I get to that, I want to welcome any new subbies I might have. Thank my old subbies for being with me through all of this. And I am thinking about bringing back different types of crafts. Also, not just paper crafting, but I'm not going to load up on crafts like I did the last time because I got to be too much. Even when I was doing it on a regular basis, it was too much. I will not be doing the polymer clay. I've had some interest in the miniatures, and that... I can do, but I'm not really set up for it. I was hoping to be able to pick a spot down in my basement because my main thing is dollhouses. I love the houses. I mean, I like the stuff that goes in them, but I love the houses because it's like your world in, in tiny, you know, your tiny world. And so I'm, our, my basement has a water issue. I have water that comes in. We've got to get the walls fixed. And I'm hoping at some point I can get back into doing them. So there may be a miniature project here and there. I, I'm also, I don't know why, but, well, I do know why, because I love it. I'm thinking about doing a sewing channel on YouTube or incorporating it in with the crafts, but then I'm thinking that might be too much. It's kind of a different sort of animal all on its own. I mean, I know we do fabric-covered junk journals and that kind of stuff, but I would not probably be doing that. I mean, I would if I was making one but it would be other sorts of sewing because I've sewn since I was about six years old. I wanted clothes for my dolls and my mom gave me her scraps because she was a wonderful seamstress and gave me a needle and showed me how to use it. And a lot of poked fingers and stuff later, I still love to sew and I have not been doing that. So 
I'm going to go on Amazon today and order a zipper foot for my machine because I got left in Egan and I told my ex I wanted it, but he didn't give it to me. So I'm just going to order a new one and all of that. But anyway, I was thanking my subbies and you all mean everything to me. You really do because you're why I'm here. Uh, so if you like what you see, please hit like and subscribe. And I will see you very, very soon with some new projects. Thank you all for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful day.